So before coming in Canada as an international student, I was an overseas Filipino worker for about eight years or so. I also have my dad <laughs> being an OFW for about 21 years now. And I've got tons of friends who are very well traveled. So in this video, I'm going to share with you our combined tips so that we can make your traveling or your flight in particular a little bit more comfortable. So I've done a lot of ways and techniques to organize my luggage. And my favorite so far is using a vacuum bag. So this particular tip is actually coming from a friend. <laughs> And I'm very glad that he shared it with me. So what I do with a vacuum bag is to allocate each of my clothing category in each bag. So I have one for seasonal clothing, I have for uh, loungewear, formal attire, and so on. So another way that a vacuum bag helps me packing is with weighing stuff. So what I do is uh, instead of putting all my stuff in my luggage and then measuring that luggage out, I instead measure each vacuum bag. So at the end of the day, after measuring everything out, including uh, my luggage, I just add everything out. So if you plan to add an additional luggage, I recommend that you use a box instead of a bag. Main reason being the weight, because a box weighs lighter than a bag. And also, you can fit more in a box than in a luggage. So, uh, I actually brought in a box with me, and I was able to bring a trolley, uh, some baking sheets, uh, my yoga mat, my ukulele, and a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, the main con with a box is how are you gonna carry it? Because you cannot really use a tie around the box. So my mom has a solution. <laughs> so what she did when she was helping me pack my stuff is to tie the box first before wrapping it with packaging tape. So the tie is still in the box rather than being outside the box. <laughs> So just for visual presentation, this is a box. So before wrapping this box with a packaging tape to make it more durable, what you do first is to tie it with your string and then you wrap it with the packaging tape. And then the top part, you leave it open and that string on top is what you use as a handle so you can carry your I paid for an extra luggage actually. So that time last year, 2021, I paid $250 for another 21 kilo luggage. So my friend and I actually booked our flight with Air Canada, but there's no Air Canada in the Philippines. So they are in partner with Anna. So in the Philippines, we flew with Anna, and then from Japan to Canada, we flew with Air Canada. So in my case, I only paid once when I was in the Philippines and I didn't have any issues uh, afterwards. So I also follow the policies imposed by Anna because Anna is the first airlines that my friends and I are flying with. So please don't quote me on this. Just to be on a safer side, if you're planning to have an extra luggage, make sure that you call both airlines because policies might have changed by now. But yes, that is my experience with extra luggage. Now, let's move on with the hand carry. <laughs> so this is my duffel bag. It's been with me for about five years now. <laughs> So this has been through a lot and this is a Herschel duffel bag. I really like this duffel bag because it has huge pockets on the front. So all the frequent documents that I need are just here. Also my like frequently used items like my water bottle. <laughs> so with some documents, 
especially the important ones, I use a clear bowl. So you don't really have to buy fancy stuff. You just have to, I guess, be creative. <laughs> so what I did with this clear book, uh, this is just an ordinary one. I got this for like 3 or 100 pesos. And I just did some DIY labels. So if you can see here, I just used a masking tape and you're supposed to see for a bookmark. <laughs> so usually the documents that you will present to the immigration officer or any airline personnel will be mentioned to you or be posted before you even go to the counter. So another way of keeping myself organized during the flight is to have a travel wallet. So as you can see at the front here, um, this is where I usually put my boarding passes, the documents are usually asked by the immigration officer or the uh, airport officers or representatives. Uh, here I have my COVID vaccination card. Inside, I have my passport, other documents right here. I also have some cash, just in case, and extra mask. I have a piece of paper right here, like a notepad. I also have my pen. Make sure that you have your pen on because sometimes before you even land, uh, the flight attendant will ask you to fill out some forms and it's very convenient if you have your pen with you. So during airport checks, officers will ask you to separate your um, laptop. So it's very convenient to just have a separate sleeve for that uh, instead of like digging in, <laughs> finding your laptop inside your bag and stuff. And uh, with the laptop, I usually bring it with me in a hand carry because you know for easy access again, instead of putting it on my uh, carry-on luggage. So when traveling, I always like to bring a empty water bottle because water bottles at the airport can be expensive. Additionally, when flying, you're only given a small amount of water, so having a water bottle is very convenient. Just ask for water from the flight attendant or refill it yourself. So aside from those items, I like to bring with me an extra pair of clothes and slippers. So with the slippers, um, it's very convenient, especially you know with a long flight. Just want to make sure that you're comfortable up there in the sky so i mean you can just remove your shoes and change with a slipper of course a set of clothing because sometimes you just want to change your set of clothes and you know uh, in case your luggage get lost at least you still have some clothes with the extra clothing i just usually pack some light clothing like this blouse and some leggings with me and of course extra garments underwear and socks so i also like bringing in some scarf to cover my neck because sometimes it's cold and cover my face <laughs> when i'm sleeping so another item you'll find in my hand carry is an extra small bag so in this extra small bag i have all my essentials so you know when you fly, your luggage, your hand carries will be placed on the overhead cabin. And I just find it very inconvenient because you know I'm small. So every time I need something on my uh, hand carry, I have to ask someone to bring my stuff down. <laughs> and it's kind of embarrassing. So my hack is to put all the necessary things that I need in a smaller bag. So before I even put my hand carries in the overhead cabin, I just bring this stuff out and put it on the side of my chair. So as you can see, I have my toothbrush and toothpaste right here. I also have some masks and some feminine items just in case. I also have some wipes and tissues and of course some snacks <laughs> so i have some snacks so it's not like there's no food in the aircraft you know especially if it's a long flight you'll usually have your 
main course or main meal plus a snack. But I had an experience where the food didn't come out yet and I was already hungry. I requested for a cup of noodles because some flights will have those and the flight that I was in does not have a cup of noodles. So I was very hungry. I think I had to wait for about an hour before the meal was served. And yeah, I learned my lesson since then. I have a snack with me. <laughs> Now with airport fashion, I'm not a very fashionable person, but I'm gonna say it anyway. <laughs> so when you're flying, especially if it's a long flight, you wanna make sure that you wear comfortable clothes. So for me, what I usually do is I wear a hoodie with me and beneath that, there's like a t-shirt. So that if the place I was going to is warm, then I can just remove my hoodie off. And if it's cold, then I can just keep it. So with the shoes, it is up to your preference. But uh, what I usually do is I wear my most heavy shoe. <laughs> because you know, weights. <laughs> but again, I mean, I have my slippers on my hand carry. So if I don't feel comfortable wearing my shoe throughout the flight, then I can just switch it up with my uh, slippers. So additionally for the shoes, sometimes they will ask you to take it off. So wearing a shoes that is easy to take off and put back on would be very, very convenient. With accessories, I feel like you don't really need to wear accessories, especially belts or anything with metals because again, when passing a metal detector, you have to remove all those stuff. And I remember the airport I was wearing this watch and I actually forgot about it. <laughs> So I had to go back and you know with airport security, they also have to make sure that the watch is yours. And I mean, it took me a while to prove that it's mine. So they asked me what kind of watch it was, color, where I left it and so on and so forth. They have to, I have to show them my passport and stuff. So since that experience, I avoid wearing those watches, those belts because it's just a hassle. <laughs> So if you have a long day over, make sure that you bring some sort of entertainment with you because sometimes it gets a little bit boring in the airport. So what I usually do is I download some episodes on Netflix or uh, my podcast just so I don't get bored. And I also bring some books, some games with me sometimes. And you can always go around the airport and explore the area, but make sure that you know where your boarding gate is first. <laughs> Actually, that is my dad's reminder that before I move around, I know where my boarding gate is. So in a very long flight, you can expect that you'll get tired. So don't forget to stretch and move around, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> and my friend's recommendation, tiptoe everyone to get your blood circulating in your body. So at least 24 hours before your flight, don't forget to do your online check-in. I figure that not everybody is aware about it, so I'm just sharing it with you because it's more convenient if you do that. Online check-in usually has shorter line compared to the normal one. So you just have to go to your airline's website or you can go through your email. I think there will be a reminder before you even fly about your flight details. And just below that, there should be an option or there should be a link for online check-in. So just go ahead and click that and then follow the steps and you are good. You are okay. So if you have any dietary requirements, make sure that you set your profile up so that your food or your dietary specifications can be catered to by the airlines. Make sure that you're in the airport at least 5 hours before your flight. I know that the recommendation is about 3 hours or so, but right now we cannot really tell how long your waiting line would be since there are added precautions and added procedures that you have to go through before you even like enter the airport. So that is it for this video. Let me know if you tried any of the tips that I've mentioned here. I'd like to hear your tips as well so that next time I'm traveling, you know, I have 
but additional thing to do. I can make my traveling much more comfortable. And if you want to reach out, please uh, read all the comments. Uh, write them down in the comment sections or reach out to me on my Instagram account. I really appreciate your support and I hope to see you on my next video and hope to see you in Canada if you're studying in Canada and at Global College of